Hello everybody, Tom Cosm here with a quick tutorial on how to warp tracks correctly using Ableton Live 9. Um, three things I want to quickly note before I start. Um, first, that most producers will only produce in a whole number BPM. Um, they do have decimal places here, but it's a bit weird. I, I can't see any reason why a producer would sit down and write something and say 124.37 BPM. It's usually a whole number. Sure, there could be a few circumstances where you might come across a tune that has a decimal place, but pretty much it's always going to be a whole number. So if you drag a track in and it's 124.87 BPM, there's a good chance that it's wrong. Uh, Ableton Live has analyzed it wrong. You usually round it to the nearest whole number. The second thing to note is that um, Ableton Live changed the way warping works quite drastically between version 7 and version 8. So if you're doing some research, watching some videos, looking at some guides, make sure it's from Ableton Live 8 onwards. Otherwise, you're going to be going backwards and learning a system that is now defunct and, or no longer active. The third thing I want to note is if the track is a constant pace, a steady BPM, it doesn't change its pace or its speed throughout the whole track, all you need is one warp marker and the correct BPM. That's all you need. A lot of people, when they first get tracks, they open, open up the track and they start um, dragging warp markers to match to the kick drums and all this kind of thing. That's just going to add complexity and make things difficult for you in the long run. If it's the steady pace, you just need one warp marker and the correct BPM. That's all. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. So I'm going to be using my DJ Mega set here. Um, if you're interested, you can go to my website and figure out how to download a copy of this um, if, it, if it looks appealing to you. And this is the house version of it. This is my house template. This is what I use when I play any kind of house set. Now you see I've got different styles, uh, different kind of subgenres of house or how I like to name them here and these are groups and inside my group I've got my uh, audio track with my track name and I'm going to go in and I'm going to drag a new track in here which I have um, from Beatport so let's drag this in like that it's going to analyze the track if I double click it you see it brings up the nice waveform down the bottom here let's check the BPM over here it says 123 so that sounds good there's no decimal places I think Ableton is live has probably figured out that this is the correct BPM so I'm going to click up on the top zoomy navigation bar here and I'm going to click and I'm going to zoom right down to the start um, and what we can see here is this is where the clip starts but there's silence so I'm willing to be that this point here um, is the actual very start of the tune. I don't think the silence is necessary so let's quickly play this track and have a listen to see if that's the case Okay, which it is the case. So this is the very start of the tune. This is where the kick hits. So I'm going to right click here and choose set 1.1.1 here. This sets the very start of the track to this um, kick drum here. This means the very start of the tune is from here. 1.1.1. First beat, first bar. Okay, so now if we play this, everything's looking good. I'm just going to zoom out a minute. And you'll see how everything is matched up to these bars and beats lines. So I'm pretty happy that this tune is 123 BPM and that it is playing exactly from there. That tune is ready now, that is warped, that's all you need to do. Okay, things can get a little bit um, more difficult. For example, I have got this Pleasure Craft tune here, I'm going to drag it in, it's going through, it's analysing it. Boom. Okay, it's picked 124.99, so remember what I was saying before about uh, decimal places not being probably not being correct. I'm willing to bet that that's 125 BPM, but let's just zoom in at the start first. Now you see this tune has a really short intro, okay? So it's, it kind of sucks up towards the intro. So I'm going to play this. All right, so it's got an intro there. Now, just for um, sometimes the, um, the tune will be kind of not matched up correctly. I'm just going to emulate that quickly for you. So sometimes it'll look like this and you're, you're like, okay, well, how do I warp this track? Um, there's no steady beat at the start of the tune for me to actually set a warp marker. So all you really need to do is find where the first beat of the track is. So let's play this one again. So let's zoom in. That's where the first kick comes in. Let's have a look. Right there, you can see it. It's given us a little pseudo warp marker. That means if we hover it over it, Ableton Live's going, hey, I think there's something happening at this point. What do you think? And I think yes. So I'm going to right click and set 111 here. So it's set the very start of the track when that kick comes in. So that's all good. So now if we hit play. All right, that's all right. But now we need to warp it correctly. I did move it myself then because it was very close, but it's not perfect. So you can see the kick goes here, the kick goes here, and then 1.2. 
and 1.23 and 3 it starts fading to the right so that tells me that this BPM is incorrect and you'll notice if I drag the BPM this will move it up and down for me so one thing you can do is you can pretty much just click here and drag it until everything kind of looks matched up um, I find it a bit easier to actually click on the BPM box and use the up and down arrow keys so let's say it's here and let's just move across a bit so we can see more as I said see how these these kind of beats or transients they call them are moving to the right this means that it is wrongly warped so I'm just going to hit the down key until they all match up which they have there and as I thought before it is actually 125 BPM on the dot and as we move through the entire waveform you can see everything is matched up so that's all perfect now but we have missed out this intro if you want to include this intro in the tune what you can actually do is you can go back now and you can bring the play symbol back to number one and if you leave the warp marker here that's all fine it'll actually warp things on the, on the right side and the left side correctly so now if i play this and let's listen with the metronome on And you can use this technique for um, tunes that have a really long intro as well. Say there might be a minute or two of an intro. Go back to the go to the very first beat that you can find that has a, a, a steady pace. Set the one 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 marker there. Deal with everything on the right hand side. Get it all correct, and then move your play symbol back to the left hand side, where all the intro y stuff is, pads or whatever, where there's no actual beat, and you'll find it should be correct. So that's all good. That's how I do it with that one. And finally, I've just got another one here just to show you um, one more example. So again, this one doesn't have a kick at the start, but it's got some, some kind of percussion-y thing. If we zoom in here, everything's been warped correctly here for us. Um, oh, no, it hasn't. It says it's 125.02. Again, I'm pretty sure it will be 125. So I'm just going to type in 125, hit enter, and everything looks fine here. So we can just play this now. Very good, I'll just drag this over here to deck 1, drag this over here to deck 2, and drag this over here to deck 3, just so we can quickly play this. Make sure the deck's up properly. And I'm just going to skip ahead in this tune, say here. Let's play this one. It's not very in key, we'll play this one. Bring the bass out. And they're all perfectly warped. And this applies to every genre. So you can do this with glitch Chop, you can do this with Trap, you can do it with Drum and Bass, Happy Hardcore, Gather, Speedcore. Um, things that are live recordings, that's where the real problem gets in. But I'm not going to focus on that, you know, because I mean bands can sway their BPM throughout a whole entire track. So that is how you warp tunes correctly. Remember, one warp marker, one, one, one. Set the start point, then figure out the BPM. Use the metronome if it helps. That's a really good way. If you if you come from a traditional DJ background where you're mixing two tunes together on CDJs or records or whatever, um, it can be quite helpful to have the metronome going as kind of a reference point, and then you'll be able to hear if something needs to be slowed down or sped up in order to match that beat. So I hope that helps. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in this DJ Mega set, go check it out. It's really, really comprehensive, and I've just released it at the time of this video, and it's lots of fun. All right, cheers. Tom Cosm, Cosm.co.nz. Thank you. Bye.